Hello and welcome once again to Men's Net. I'm Roy Barreca and joining me as usual is my co-host and the executive producer of the show, Tony Nazaro. Tony, what are we discussing tonight? Well, tonight, Roy, the uh, title of the show is about uh, Billie Jean King. And uh, we're going to be bringing up the uh, Battle of the Sexes uh, tennis match against uh, her and uh, Bobby Riggs. Um, of 1973 and uh, you know it's an important issue recently she spoke out at Purchase College and we uh, took our uh, camera crew out there on location we certainly did yeah we had a lot of fun out yeah, there yeah. as uh, the, the viewers will see but you know our point was important we want to really discuss do women deserve equal prize money um, you know is this uh, is it equal pay for equal work mm -hmm. and uh, so we'll we'll see we'll we'll see what the uh, patrons uh, out there at Purchase had to say, and uh, anytime you're ready, Michelle, maybe we can go to that first clip. You're going in to see her tonight. Oh, because she was one of my childhood idols. And she's That's made easy. it. My children now have been able to go to college and play sports, and they've gotten to play on every team there was in high school. And my older daughter played Little League in third grade. She's opened the world up for all and of us. I happen to be a girls' physical education teacher, and I think we would not have Title IX or any of the equal rights that girls have today were not for women like Billie Jean. Yes, but look what she used to do it. She used the Bobby Riggs match, which was what? pretty much it's a scam. But, but it was... It yeah, was look at what's her face, Annika Sorenstamp. She has no business being on that golf course this weekend. I agree with that. Whatsoever. But she's there, so, isn't she? So women are going to make more money in golf in another 10 years, and that's uh, what women have to do in order to get equal rights in sports. Billie Jean and Bobby Riggs was a fun, happy match. I watched that match. It was wonderful. It, it was, was wonderful. Great. Would you feel the same way if she had lost? Absolutely. I thought it was I such it was a great, great And I'm glad that she won. Yeah. You think he, was a, he just felt he was so great and yeah, she had he to was, take him down. He was a ham about it. But the thing is, is he that... Care. He wanted to go. He wanted national exposure. He got the national yeah. exposure. The and she made strides for women's rights. Right. She, my friends and I were just debating did she win or not. And oh. I think she did. Yes. Well, yeah. That's what we're here about yeah, uh, to some degree. So you'll right. read that and you'll you'll uh, you'll let us know what you think of it. And uh, I think she's done a lot for women and young girls in tennis and sports over the years. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that would have happened if she didn't defeat Bobby Riggs? I think she might have been uh, a positive influence on women and sports anyway. He, he defeated Margaret Court a few months earlier, if you recall. Yeah, and then Margaret Court faded from the scene. She had her heyday, and it didn't have anything to do with it. And Besides, she wasn't a public figure. I mean, Billie Jean is just, you know, she's a little larger than life. Margaret Court was very laid back and kind of, well, you know. We're talking about athletics, not about personalities here. No, on the contrary. We're talking about athletics plus personality makes for popularity, makes for bringing interest to the sport and bringing it into the public arena. You have to have personality to do that. You know that. It opened doors. It started a whole new way of thinking. It wasn't the actual act itself. It was the whole mindset. Well, what was the, what was the new way of thinking? That men and women could compete, that women were able to compete on the same level as a man. Yeah, but yeah. after that, they didn't, because right after she beat him, you didn't see women play in men's categories. It was dropped. They're still separated. The right. men and women are still separated, but the whole idea of women's sports and making a living at, living at women in sports w was certainly progressed from that point on. He didn't know she was going to use it to uh, promote women's uh, equal pay in sports what did after think that. it was going to be for? Well, he thought it was going to be for making money, and they well, both had a lot of money. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you had no problem with uh, her playing, you know, someone who was retired. And no, I thought good for her. Good for her. Do you think 30 years later that should be her most famous moment in sport? No, I think what should be is what she did for women's tennis and where she put it and what she did for the league mm -hmm. and everything else. She really put women's tennis on the map. But do you think you would be here tonight if it wasn't for that Bobby Riggs oh, match? Absolutely. Bobby Riggs had nothing to do with me being here. Mm -hmm. that, that wouldn't even enter into it until you mentioned right. I hadn't even yeah, thought about but it. it was, but we thought her uh, using that Bobby Riggs match, playing somebody who was retired, he was much older than her. He's a hustler. Get out of yes, here. He was a hustler, but she she ended up with the biggest hustle. You think he was doing that just for that? He was doing it for the money. Oh, he obviously. Was. Yes, he was. Why 30 years later is it such a remarkable feat that she beat a 55-year-old man? That's because what. Because he had a big mouth. He wanted it. 
He begged for it. Do you think that this, that in society, that should have caused such a big stir at the time? It's the publicity. You guys put him. You guys put him there. Oh, we didn't put him there. No, no. He did it all on his own. You give him. <laughs> you, you give him the time on TV. He's gonna go for it. What are you kidding? <laughs> Why did you find that so remarkable that she was 29, top of her form, and, and beat a 55-year-old man? Well, she was a great uh, tennis player, and uh, she evidently was better than he was, and this was a, a, a gender-type thing. Yeah, in that. They promoted it as an equal match, and it really wasn't, being she was on the top of her game and he wasn't. Right, and they felt that even though he wasn't, that he could beat her, right. and she had to show that she could beat him. And her style is marvelous. She showed that little runt with the 62 million vitamins out of play. Oh, Bobby Riggs. Right. Uh huh. Uh huh. But don't you think that was a sham, though? I mean, you know, they they use that to really say that women could beat men, but women never played men after that. That's a setup question, because I do not think it was a sham. They did it for money. They are professionals. Right, but she. So that's not a sham. Well, they both made money. I know Bobby Riggs. He would never throw anything. Yeah. I, I, I beat him on the golf course. Yeah. And he's a hell of a golf course. <laughs> Somebody set up a match with the two of us. Yeah. He's the biggest hustler that ever lived, and he would never lose anything on purpose. Yeah, he, he walks like a hustler. Does he has a hustler style? Yeah, but, but my question was, don't you think that they overblew the result of that? Who the they? The, the, the women. No, Billy yeah. Jean and the professional women's tennis players used that to get equal prize money the following year. Oh, I don't think so. No, yes, they did. <laughs> it's been documented. Think, without Billie Jean, like this tour would are. never... It's a set-up question. <laughs> but I'm just telling you what the facts are. I mean, we've done research on it. I agree with you. No. As a matter of fact, two years before that, Billie Jean wanted to get equal prize money. So that match was a stepping stone for women to say, see, a woman could beat a man. Wait, okay. One, one step. But she had already started ball rolling. And yep. without Billie Jean, women would be making right. a quarter of what they're and making now. I mean, she, I, she's not an icon as far as I'm concerned but she a, was a great tennis player. She was a great advocate. She's done everything that she possibly could for tennis, and she's done a good job. I think I so, too. I agree. Do so you think that should have happened, that she beat a 55-year-old man at the top of her, her form, and, and she beat somebody who's uh, retired? City, my dear, anything publicity that helps your cause is valid. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, there it is. Uh, anything that helps your cause is valid. Uh, yeah. Boy, that's a hell of an attitude to have, you know. They uh, they justify, uh, you know, the I the guess means, the ends. Yeah. yeah, the ends justify the means yeah. as a way of uh, of uh, them cheating or uh, exploiting a particular situation, mm -hmm. like uh, young Billy Jean King playing a 55-year-old man who was retired yeah. and uh, blowing it up into uh, a point to get equal prize money at the U.S. Open. Mm. Um, I, I just think it's very shameful. I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, you know, what does this have to, have to do with, uh, you know, equal pay and, e and Title IX? Her, her victory was a shallow victory. And again, we point out on the tape mm. that he beat Margaret Court, the number one ranked woman in the world, a few mm. months earlier. Right. But that doesn't count. Nobody no, remembers no, that. No. I, I find that fascinating. Well, because the man won, you see. Right. So it was like a dog bites man. So right, it, it's, right. it's no news. So, uh, you know, it, it, but, you know, they, they turned it around. And, and now that uh, the whole legitimacy of the match... It, you know, is is brought into question right. because again, it was it was just a real falsehood. So, right. but uh, even the New York Times, I mean, they, they talk about shallow victories, mm -hmm. and uh, they, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Anika Sorenstam soon. Yeah, this is from what uh, this they, is for. This yeah. is from uh, May the twenty fourth of this year. Uh, Billie Jean King's campy tennis victory over Bobby Riggs in nineteen seventy three provided symbolic proof that women could compete against men. Riggs. Though well over the hill, uh, he, he was defeated. But it, they even mentioned he was well over the hill. Yeah. And, but they still count that as a symbolic victory. Mm. I don't see her playing Rod Laver at the time. <laughs> I mean, would that have been too much to ask? But why this issue is important, you know, it wasn't just about the match. Mm. It's about equal pay for equal work. Mm. And I realized that 10 years ago that I actually had a letter to the editor published on this particular uh, battle of the sexist tennis mm. match between Billie Jean and Bobby Riggs because mm. I, I saw the symbolism, you know, where, where sometimes women say uh, we want equal pay for equal work and yet when it comes to sports, 
there is an equal work. Right. You know, as Arthur Ashe, none other than Arthur Ashe pointed out, uh, women didn't draw the same amount of spectators. Uh, they played only two out of three sets instead of three out of five. And they couldn't come close to, to uh, beating men ranked mm. the same as them. So on what grounds, do, you know, would you ask for equal prize money? Just because they, they think they have the same draw as the men. They think they're as popular as the men. In fact, we heard some uh, women say that women's tennis is more popular than men's tennis now. It's more interesting because there's more personalities involved. And they might have a point to that. So, but, yeah, but are the guys looking at the, uh, the tennis or are they looking at their legs? I mean, why is women's I think that, tennis, uh, you know, when you, when you come to think about it, uh, uh, women's ice skating is very popular, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, ballet, things of that nature. Anything that... It, it shows off a woman's body, it seems draws a crowd. Well, it, it, in fact, from the same article, it said uh, that uh, for three decades, women in the United States have had their names on the marquee above men in tennis, figure skating, soccer, and mm -hmm. track and field. Mm -hmm. But they put their names above uh, them on the marquee. Yeah. What does that mean? Does that mean they're the primary drawer? Or does yes. that mean that they lobbied to get their names above uh, the men? I think they're saying in those particular fields that they feel that, uh, at least the New York Times feels, that they're more popular as athletes compared to men's in, their, in those particular sports. Mm -hmm. But let's look at some of the cheating aspects of it. You know, we, we talked about uh, women uh, getting handicaps in golf. That yeah, we'll they get have to that later. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'd like to get into oh, it right right now. now. Yeah, okay. get, uh, we talked about the handicapping in golf, um, and we'll bring that up later. Yeah. Um, you know, the gender normed equipment that I no, want to bring out now. Yeah, yeah, I want to want to talk a little bit about this. Uh, years ago, uh, before nineteen uh, in the. Before 1975, they had wooden tennis rackets that the men and women played with, mm -hmm. and the women were doing terrible. They had a very low turnout. Uh, they, their, their matches weren't competitive. The 14 and 15 ounce rackets were too heavy for them to wield uh, in two out of three, let alone three out of five set matches. And so they went to the composite racket, I believe specifically to help women. Two ounces lighter is a lot lighter when you're swinging it mm -hmm. around for two to three hours. Yeah, but didn't men have the same advantage? This men had the same advantage, however, it kind of hurt men because they were hitting the ball so hard, their matches were, uh, or their, their points were one or two shots and it was over. So, it, was Whereas, too fast. so it, it helped the women's game raise up, it gave them more power, but it made the men, men's game uh, too powerful. Oh, you maybe, know, so maybe that's why it, yeah. even today it's this, more or less the same yeah. thing sometimes. Um, as far as tennis balls, you know, we, um, they, they have all different types of tennis balls, Roy. And, uh, you know, they got hard court, soft court, uh, extra duty felt. It led me into research the tennis balls mm -hmm. that the Women's Tennis Association uh, was using. And I believe, and I can't prove mm -hmm. this, I believe that they use a hopped up ball. Oh, really? Because in seeing the way the gals hit the ball, it, the ball speed picked up so dramatically, just kind of like wh when the uh, home run king, what's his name? Um, Barry Bonds. No, uh, Mark, Mark McGuire. McGuire yes. Recently, all of a sudden, started hitting 10 <coughs> more home runs uh, than Roger Maris mm -hmm. did. Uh, people should have looked into you know, the equipment and maybe if there was any, uh, and I'm not saying he did, but any possible drug use. Well, I think that's what's going on in, in women's tennis. You mean at I Wimbledon and at the U.S. Open tennis, they have separate balls for women? You, you really I that? Sure, they're supplied by the Women's Tennis Association for the women, uh, and they're supplied by the uh, Men's uh, uh, Tennis Association for well, the men. That's fascinating. Theory. You know, so why would they do that? Which and then the different style of balls. Some of them are heavier. Some of them are more pressurized. You know, so it's it's mm -hmm. uh, it's something to look into, mm -hmm. and uh, and and finally, and and I know this is an, a little bit of an unrelated uh, topic, but uh, Bert, if you can kind of get in there, um, well, yeah, let's do the uh, men's ball first, just to give you an idea. It says right on here. Recommended for males 12 and older. Um, this, the uh, diameter or the circumference of the uh, of a men's basketball is 29.5 inches. If you could get it there in that corner, this is the uh, standard uh, or regulation size ball, and it's heavier than the 